I created Species Nutrition with one mission in mind, to provide bodybuilders and serious athletes with no-nonsense supplements that work. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. And we're back for another live episode of After Hours. I'm Dave Palumbo, joined by the WAC Pack today. And we had some very sad news in the bodybuilding world. Mike Quinn, mighty Mike Quinn, has passed at 59 years old. Uh, one of the uh, true characters in our sport. I don't think uh, he's ever minced words about anything that he ever said in the sport. I think he was a, a guy who delivered when he was at his best. And uh, he was a personality that's going to be greatly missed. Uh, any personal uh, stories uh, you guys have with Mike Quinn? I, I mean, I know Mike really well. I yeah. can't, did he, how did he die? I just, I heard about no that. One know, no one knows. No one knows yet. I mean, he was, you know, he had a lot of like, he wasn't Damn. old. Oh, yeah. He was 59. 59. Yeah. His no, girlfriend I'm... used to live with Bob Bonham. It, just, it was the strangest thing. She was in oh, a really? Yep. She was in a relationship with, and she died too. They were, you know, <clears throat> too much drugs. You know what I'm saying? Too much of that shit. Yeah. But she she died. She lived with Bob Bonham. I mean, uh, it was the which, was, which girlfriend was that, uh, Greg? She died. She died about a year or two before Bob died. So I don't. I don't remember her name. But she lived with him for a year, for like two years. Hi, down I'm here. Michelle, and I'm Bill. They had a. Uh, she was with Quinn, but she lived with Bob. And Bob. Oh, I didn't know that. You mean recently? The recent yeah, girlfriend. Oh, is, oh. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is in Florida. You know. Uh, well, Mike told me the last time I interviewed him on the show, which had to be a couple of years ago, that he was suffering. You know, he had. He was bipolar and that he had suffered for, you know, since he was young. And he was always used to self-medicate when he was younger. Oh, he's still self-medicate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love the guy. Which is the case with a lot of people who are bipolar because they go through fits of depression and then mania, you know, and they try to balance themselves out. Some people use alcohol. Some people use drugs. You know, but when um, you do drugs for head meds for a long time and he, him right. and his girlfriend, you know, did a lot of head men. I mean, I know a lot of stories. I'm not gonna. I don't right. want to talk on. You know, he was a good. I liked Mike. I got along very well with him. And um, when I used to have my hair, I used to have my hair slicked back, you know, along in the back and everything. Yeah. A lot of people used to think I was him, which was crazy. I had a guy chase me down. You look a little like you're right. You do look a little like you know, especially when I had my hair like that. You know, we had the hair same way. But uh, I knew Mike extremely well, and I, uh, I mean, I liked him. He was a very intense guy, but he was very. He had a personality to him too. It's yeah. just uh, I'm a little shocked about that because somebody just said that on my um, on a video I did, and um, I was like, "Holy shit!" And I googled it, and I didn't see anything about him dying. But I, I it, he had a strange, again, his girlfriend. It was a strange relationship because she lived with Bob. Bob and her would fuck around, and Mike knew about it, but just kind of overlooked it. And uh, but Bob was just friends with her. It, it was an absurd. Bob, was Bob? Let me ask you this question: Was Bob supporting her? No, no, no. My, she was supporting herself. Mike wasn't supporting. Mike was at, the, you know, I know Mike was having a lot of fun. He was living with his parents. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? So he had wow. a lot of financial problems. And uh, I think he felt, I can tell you this from talking to him. I know that he felt kind of disrespected by the bodybuilding world because, you know, uh, you know, in the social media era, he kind of wasn't like, uh, you know, he, you know, he had, he had his own social media and everything. But what I'm saying is he wasn't like uh like big in social media. So he felt like kind of like he, he didn't get props a little bit like he should. Uh, do you, do you no. understand? I mean, he got, I love the guy's physique. I, I loved when he would compete. He had, he had, when you knew Mike Quinn was coming up, you were like, okay, I'm, I'm not getting up out of my seat. We got to check it because he always, you know, he always put on a good show. He was always very charismatic, you know? And, uh, and he was like that in person. He would tell you to go fuck yourself. And uh, yeah, he got in fights. I mean, uh, you know what I'm saying? My my friend was in a fight with his girlfriend. And uh, who was 
I'll tell you who it was. It's you and you know her. It's, a, it's an Amazon female bodybuilder, and my friend was dating her. My friend's nuts too. And Mike Quinn jumped in, and you know he was he you know we were all together. I was oh I was with Bob Bonham and Mike Quinn when um when uh uh Steve um uh, not Steve Weinberger uh, when um oh my God uh Jim Mannion who had a fight with uh, uh you know with uh. Jim, uh, what the hell's his name there? The fucking uh, Jesus, Rick. Vince McMahon. McMahon. Vince McMahon. And uh, you were we at were, that uh, dinner. Hold on, yeah. hold on. You were at that dinner, supposedly. Yes, I was at the dinner. Yes. Oh, so I was that right definitely there. happened. Suit and ties. We had to wear suit and ties. And um, he was there, and uh, it was a big. It was a fight. I'll tell you what. Mannion stood up, and went was they had to hold him back. Steve Weinberger was holding him back, and then Mike Quinn jumped in. You know, Bob and I kind of stepped over there but we didn't i didn't get involved you know what i mean i didn't you know it wasn't my thing to get involved in but uh uh what's his name mcmahon stood up real slow went like this with his thing and you know he just stood there but he was it looked like he was ready but Mannion was insane he had to hold him back i mean he was like i'll fucking kill you you know it was like it was crazy man that was like 1990 is that when the wbf came out when vince right yeah because for a little bit yeah uh McMahon was trying to get involved with the IPB a little bit. So he was around them and they were all at he they were at the same table. It was one right. giant table. And um, you know, and uh, you know, it was me, Bob, and Mike Quinn. We were talking all of a sudden I see Mike jump in the middle of this thing, you know, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Right now? I'm let me I got I want to go to Romano on this for a second. John, you ever notice that the, in our industry there's like a certain like number of people? You could probably name them on, on, on your fingers. Every time there's a fight, that person is there. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, fight. Quinn is there. Steve Weinberg yeah. is there. Um, yep. Who else is with the fights? There's always there's always like the same group of people there. Craig yeah. Titus. Titus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Titus wasn't Titus wasn't at this, but the, no, this Mike Quinn way before him. Titus. Yeah, I think it was. Mike grabbed. Mike uh, helped Weinberg. Like stood on Weinberg. You know, with Weinberg and grabbed. Grabbed uh, uh, Jim. Jim was. I'm going to tell you something. If they didn't hold him back, he was ready to blast. Uh, he was ready yeah. to blast McMahon. I mean, so what was, happened to so what happened to Quinny when he died? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you been in a coma this morning? I didn't. I haven't <laughs> seen anything yet. Oh yeah, Mike Quinn passed unfortunately. What ha happened? I what looked happened? it up, John, on the internet. You don't I couldn't know. find anything. Well, well you should have looked on my Instagram. It was on my Instagram page. Yeah, you know me. I'm like really good with social media, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, I mean, if you knew Mike Quinn, Mike Quinn was a, a very charismatic, very. Where is I'll tell you a good Mike Quinn story in a second. I mean, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I saw I saw Mike Quinn guest pose, and um, my girlfriend and I had seats. Well, we thought we had seats that were up front, and uh, after the guest posing, Mike Quinn was very adamant to let us know that we had to move. Those were his seats. Oh no! You just what did you just sit down in an A seat when you got I didn't there? See, no, I said I said no problem, man. I mean, geez, he's a pro. He's guest posing. Yeah, I sat down in the seat. <laughs> I thought I thought it. <laughs> lo and behold, get, get, get your fucking ass out of that seat. Dude, I, like he's Charlie I, I wanted to be closer to, to see him. Yeah. Oh, Literally, definitely like, Charlie Arms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's yeah. like Charlie Arms. Okay, get up. Let's go. Hey, you too. Yeah, yeah. Because because he did it when he was guest posing. He jumped off the stage. He starts guest posing <laughs> in the crowd. He sees me and my girl in his seats. He's like, you guys, in the middle of guest posing. He goes, you guys gotta go. This is, these are my seats. That's fucking great, man. That's, that that's awesome. like, man. Dude, that's Class Charlie Long. Friend. Let's go. Get out. Hey, out of those two seats. I'm when I get off the stage. Wild guest posing, Greg. Wild guest posing. Yeah, I'm I sure. love it. That's, I, that, the that's best flavor. Mike Quinn story. The best Mike Quinn story I have, though, is he told me the story. And and other people have confirmed it. He was backstage <laughs> at the um at one of the Grand Prix. Remember after the Olympia, they would have these European Grand Prix. Yeah. Well, he was backstage there, and I guess. Phil Hill was picking on Bob Paris. Now, I don't know if he was picking on him in the sense of just making fun of him or if it had anything to do with the fact that, that Bob, that Bob uh, was gay. I, I don't know what, what it was, but Quinn didn't like the fact that he was picking on Bob Paris. And Bob's not a fighter. He was, you know, a very mellow guy. So I guess Mike confronted him and Phil gave him the wrong answer. And Mike blasted him in the face and knocked him down. <laughs> Like backstage, remember, pump, imagine this, pumping up for a show. You're about to go out, and Mike Quinn just fucking 
knocks this guy down. And Phil was a big guy. And Phil's Quinn big guy. Floored, floored him, supposedly. Like, knocked him right to the yeah, ground. Yeah, that was probably because the date went bad. Because Phil Hill wasn't really what I would consider the most, uh, you know what I'm saying? Not for nothing. But that might have been what? like. Might have been a oh, oh really? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I don't know, but you know, I might. I don't know for sure. But I mean, dude, Quinn, <laughs> I, I was with uh, Vinny Paz, you know, the boxer, and he has yes. some great. He has the best Mike Quinn stories because he, he, Mike Quinn, when you know, Quinn was involved with all these like crazy underworld guys. You know, what I mean, I, I you hear, I know well, stories. Paz is from up in New England area, Boston area, and that's where Quinn was from, and so they had hired Mike to. Walk Pazienza out to the in the ring, right during the right. fights. But they became good friends. I know oh, Pat; okay. he's a great guy. But he, they, they became friends, and they hung out. And Paz used to tell wow. me, "Dude, I, I'd have to fucking stop him." He, you know, he'd be punching more guys than Pazienza. You know what I mean? Like, he, <laughs> he, you know, and Pazienza told me, "Bro, he's fucking crazy." I had to stop hanging out with him. We go to clubs. He, you know, pound down a few drinks, and you know, next thing you know. Instead of picking up chicks, there's a fucking fight going on. And it's Quinn kicking the shit out of somebody. <laughs> you know, he he got knocked out though by uh, some wise guy. Knocked him out down in uh, Florida. Did it, own... Didn't he cut his whole face in a beer bottle or something like that? Maybe no, yeah, something before. different. Oh, what yeah, was, I saw was that, that in a magazine? Yeah, yeah, someone hit him with a beer bottle, like he at a bar. He was balancing or something yep. like that. Yeah, that, that was before that I got was in. Like in fight. Miami, I think. Yeah, but this oh. was a wise guy, a guy, you know. Yeah, it was, it was a guy who was connected. Who, yeah, who was won. it over? I, I, who knows? I who think knows. it was over the club he owned, right, or something like that? Because he owned yeah, a gold Yeah, but that was and... him with a bottle. He him with a fucking right hook and knocked him out. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I, 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 I hired Greg. Here's a name for blast from the past for you. DeMarco Blue A. Oh, my God. DeMarco Blue A. So yeah. I hired a friend of mine who was a – quasi wise guy was coming back to LA and somebody had been threatening him because he was dating some girl that supposedly belonged to somebody else. So he calls me up from Hawaii and says, I'm coming back to LA, but I can't, I can't land at the airport without security because I'm afraid of this guy. And I don't want to call the cops. I said, all right, let me see what I can do. I go to, I go to Gold's. There's DeMarco standing there. I go, man, I need to hire some security. He goes, I'll do it. And I said, I need another guy. He goes, come here. And he says, he calls to go over Quinn. I never met Quinn before. He, he, I'd seen him in the gym, but I never like formally met him because he was kind of like a guy you wouldn't approach. So he said, <laughs> oh, this guy's perfect. He's got a scar from all the way like down oh. his face. It's huge. And he looks mean as fuck. And I said, yeah, well, but let's go, both of them. So um, we go to the airport. The guy comes in. My, the guy, I told him on the phone, listen, man, you got to have cash in your hand when you land because th th these guys are not, I'm not paying them and you're going to have to pay them. So he goes, don't worry, don't worry. He, he walks out of the wherever, he gets into the where, where we are, where we're waiting for him. He takes one look at DeMarco Blue and 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 uh, Mike Quinn. Yeah. He thought I he, he's seen security goons before, but never anything like that. He reached into his pants pocket so fast to pull out that 500 bucks. I couldn't even, you couldn't even have blinked the time it took him to pay them. He was, he was dude, these are the most frightening people I've ever seen in my life. Dude, I'm surprised Quinn didn't punch the guy anyway. Just the, <laughs> the guy Quinn, wasn't there. Quinn would get like excited, like, like, dude, I got, you know, I'm here, I got to fuck somebody up. Cause that's, he was, when he was in his heyday, he could throw, bro. He could throw hands. Yeah, I mean, no. So DeMarco says, he says, when I when we're getting ready to go to the airport, he says, do you have 100 bucks on you? I, 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 this is like 1980-something, so 100 bucks was a lot of money. I go, yeah. He goes, give it to Quinny. Don't worry about me. Give it to Quinny because <laughs> he, I, I want him to feel like he's got something in his pocket, you know? <laughs> yeah, you motivate yeah. him. You motivate Mike him. The other, the the other 150 arms. was coming later, you know? Mike he was had best. some of the best arms. He really did. Incredible people. He's a good team bodybuilder. I don't know. A lot of people don't know that about him. Really There is a picture of him. Uh, America. I'll pull it up. There's a That's picture of him. He's got, he's, he's got no shirt on. He's got two pit bulls on a leash and that I'll scar on his face. He looks like he's ready to kill everybody in in, in <laughs> the vicinity. He gave me that picture, poster. I have it in the That picture's 19 years old right there on the right. Wow. Wow. He looks great. That's with There's Jerry no tough, tough guy bodybuilders anymore, is there? Is there? Like, no. how long now? Nah. Everyone's, like, everyone's afraid. Everyone sues. Sues. Yeah. sues. No, there's no tough guys. There's, there's 
There's armchair tough guys, you know, uh, internet, internet tough guys. Tough guys. Yeah. Greg will tell you there were fights at Gold's Gym fucking almost weekly, if not more. You know, there was. Remember Jeff Henry, Greg? Jeff Henry. Um, he died recently. Jeff Henry. I mean, he, I was friends with Mark Henry. <laughs> he was a fi he was a fixture at Gold's. He, he, I thought you'd know him. He, if I saw him visually, I might know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, when was he there? I, though? Was he in early days like that? Like I was in eight one eight two. If I saw him, I might know. You probably you would remember him. He was he was a fixture. Do you remember these, John? Do you remember these things? Boyer <laughs> <laughs> Cove. Boyer Cove. So there's the calves, right? Bill <laughs> calves. Oh, power calf shoes. Yeah, the power calf somebody shoes. Somebody was getting rid of these, and my girlfriend got them. A calf shirt. <laughs> yeah. What size are those? These are fucking almost twelve. Oh, twelve. So, I can not use 11 and a half. CT Fletcher, those are 12 and a half. And he told me, bro, if you if those are 12 and a half, I'll take them from you. I told him no. Yeah, that, that was one of his better shots. He looked good yeah. in his suspenders. Oh, yeah. The one with the two pit bulls yeah. is the best one ever. Dude, yeah, his that's... torso. I have the one with the pit bulls. It's in the back room. He gave me the poster. Wow. I, I have it. He wrote on it, too. You know, all the shit to me. But, um, Greg? What'd he do? Did he stay at your house? No. No, 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 He might be the only IFBB pro from that era not to stay at your house. Could be. <laughs> I had a lot here. A lot. You know, there's the pictures right there. Or Lee Haney sitting right where I'm sitting. But, um, you know, uh, he, he, he was, uh, he had a great torso, though. Not for nothing, but his whole, when he did a double bicep, that was a, a really nice look, you know? Yeah. He, he could have been it, really, really good if his if his if brain was screwed on right. He said it to me. He goes, I, he goes, I, w I was a fuck up. I was doing everything half fast. He goes, if I was able to focus for any length of period of time, he goes, I, I only tapped into thirty percent of my potential. He said, Wow, probably. He's right. You know, you know, uh, he, but he because he would go off for no reason. He would get in fights at Gold's Gym, all that shit, all the time for no reason. You know what's funny? When Lee Labrada came here to my house, there's another one that was here, okay? Uh, two weeks out yes. before the 87, uh, 88 Olympia in, in Los Angeles, he was telling me I was almost missed the plane because when we were in the gym, Mike Quinn was was screaming at uh, at, at, at Mike, uh, Mike Christian. And Mike Christian was getting really mad and had to be held back. And Quinn kept popping the mouth and kept going. And let's go, bro. Let's go. And and uh, Labrada was telling me, dude, I I, I kind of did want to miss it if they were going to go. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I would have wanted to watch that. That would have been amazing. Not for I, you know what? No one likes Mike to fight. Christian would have killed him. Not for nothing. If you, if John, uh, John, you know, Mike Christian was a bad, bad dude. Mike I mean, Christian was Mike Christian was instrumental in one of the starting members of the Crips. <laughs> I wouldn't. Mike I wouldn't. Christian, be, Mike Christian was a bad, bad, bad dude. Very <clears throat> bad. I saw him tell Victor Richards. Victor Richards was in the back with a fucking, uh, you know, with a. The, they had the schoolyard fence to separate the parking lot in the back with it when you open up the back door, right? And he was like this. Victor was on the other side. Victor Richards was on the other side of the fence. Oh, sorry, John. What's that? This is the 18th time you've told that story. Well, <laughs> I have a tally running now. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> great every time. They love when I yeah. tell these fucking yeah. stories. No, I love it. Been you know, on a lot you know of years. The, the problem with, with Quinn is that I don't care how tough you are. No one wants to fight someone who's who's not afraid and who's a little crazy because, you know what? He could hurt you. You know, just because you could beat him up doesn't mean mm -hmm. you're not going to get hurt, you know? Mike Christian knew that Victor Riches would never fight him. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Although Victor, Victor, like this. Victor tells me the opposite. Victor says that Christian backed down off of him. No. I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> you gotta be fucking <laughs> no. Dude, Christian Dude, and I, back down don't go in the same line. Dude, it's Christian would have absolutely no fucking way. There's I think no way. Out the barbarian brother. Dude, there's no fucking way. <laughs> Victor was not. Victor was on the other side of the fence. And Christian went like this, and Victor went back off the fence like that. He was, I mean, what do you think Christian's going to go through? It? He, he, he's full of shit. It was Mike Christian would fence. go what through the fence. What's that? Christian would go through the fence. Yeah, yeah, right. He would have ran around. Dude, Mike Christian was the greatest guy. Happy, go lucky, really good guy. You know what I'm saying? But if you pissed him off, you're going to get kicked like a fucking football. He fucking didn't play around. Let me tell you something. He had, and, 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 uh, 
you know, him and Quinn got along. But when if Quinn started losing his temper, or they, look at that, though. Wow. Come on. That's better that looking than any of these guys. That just that shows you, right like. right there looks better than these guys today. I'm sorry. It's you guys, it just shows you what a pro crowd. card means now. Like, compared 10, 20 years ago, the pro, like, 10 to 20 years ago, take the heavyweights or super heavyweights. That's the top. That's the, that's the pro level today. I always tell guys yeah. that the guys they agree. That's an amazing physique for not having they a give out pro, pro cards. cards though today. You can get them on a milk carton oh, for yeah, 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 that's what, a pro card. Oh, it's it's industry, Greg. It's so industry. sad. It means nothing now. It, it means yeah. nothing. Everybody it used, to, it used to be a real sport, now it's an industry. It's horrible. It's fucking Good horrible. It's sad. It's a some girl. Hey, no, hey, hey, hey guys, the difference is I, there. I, are, I don't know if, if if you remember this. Um when Flex, Rico, and Chris were all training together, it was 1995. I, I was there at Gold's for a photo shoot with Titus. And um, I don't remember exactly how the whole thing came about, but I was walking in, and uh, Flex had some beef with the new guy, who was a new guy, at the front desk. And no, no kidding, dude, Flex threw a kick that came this close to the guy's face and goes, you better remember who I am and walked in. <laughs> you don't Everyone like that. Oh man. I mean, it was, it was, it was, uh, his back then. you had to be afraid, you know, <laughs> you had to watch who, what you said to people. You couldn't yeah. just mouth off the people. Like you can today, you know? Especially there because at world gym, Joe Gold didn't tolerate anything. Nothing. 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 If a dust speck was out of line, it, it was, but at gold's, Fucking anything went. It was a zoo in there. It was the exact <laughs> polar opposite. Right. And yeah. People got into fights. You remember the time Jeep Swenson came in and beat up Tom Platts? Do you remember Jeep that? Swenson, Jeep Swenson beat him up in a parking lot. I and got that, there. I walked yep. it. And I got there after it happened. But let me tell you something. That's because of Cheryl. Was Jeep Swenson? I think Cheryl was married to Jeep Swenson, and then she went with Tom. What it was, was a whole fucking rigmarole. What, what was very interesting was that a, the day later, after after the fight, Cheryl comes to the gym with these big glasses, sunglasses on. He had a black guy. He had a black guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those were the days, though, bro. Yeah, that, those that were the days. Ad- that was an animal house. But the thing I liked about World's Gym is they, I, I loved World's Gym because they didn't play music. I, I'm one of the weirdos that doesn't like music when I work out. I like to, I like to, if I train at my house, I listen to sports radio or, you, you know, like that. Like I listen to WFAN or ESPN radio or I, I watch, uh, except when you start talking all that basketball, it kills me. But, uh, you know, I, I watch sports is really what I do. You know what I mean? It was the yes. variety, though, Greg, right? I mean, if you, if you were in the mood, if you were in the mood for a freak show and you wanted to see, you know, girls training in shredded fishnets and mm-hmm. hanging That's out. That's Gold's Gym. You go to Gold's. Mm-hmm. If, you got, if you're in the mood that day for the super intense leg workout on the best equipment ever made for training legs, you go outside at, the pit, at, 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 at World and you, you train while looking at the ocean. You so, go on a porch. Right, you're right Joe outside Gold. on the deck. Joe so, Gold, for you guys that don't know, Joe Gold, an original, uh, an original world's yeah. gym, painted yeah. the equipment with swimming pool paint. Yep. Remember that, John? <laughs> it was painted with swimming pool paint. Yeah. So all the right. iron that was outside had swimming pool paint. And, dude, how the fuck did he drill holes? He had regular stack of plates, a regular, you know, steel plates, they were, you know, from a barbell set, and he would drill holes, and they would line up perfectly. So when you were doing, like, you know, uh, uh, anything with a pulley, it, you know, weight stack. It was a weight stack that was homemade. And and even his, the pins were like skinny, like almost like nails. They gl- and they glided in like they were per- perfect Like fit. butter. That's yep. because he was a, uh, he made equipment. He was yeah. fucking he ingenious. Those, those leg presses machine, he, the leg presses he had, the bearings on the, on the guides, those bearings were for like a dump truck. They were super overbuilt and he had doubles. He had two on each side. He was like so overbuilt. But you could you got on that thing. That was the smoothest. You remember that leg press in the back oh, yeah. by you the window? Hear... It was like, it was like gl- glided up and down. It yeah. was incredible. I wonder if anyone has that equipment still somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That shit's like uh Dave, he made this shit. He would take. If the- anyone has it, Ron Norman probably has it in his right. basement. Yeah. Yeah. No, Greg, take- remember his back, his back problems. He 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 put himself in a wheelchair 
when you when you opened a gym in in the valley. Remember, he had the world gym in the valley. Mm -hmm. He made all the equipment for that Everything. by himself. And I lived two bl a block from him on on in oh, Venice, really? when, where he was work. So I knew he was out there. You could see him out, hear him grinding and shit, sparks flying at two o'clock in the morning. He was. He he built every single piece of that equipment by himself. But how did he do? He destroyed his back. How do you get those steel plates? And iron and you fucking drill a perfect hole just to make a weight stack. I mean, he was a machinist. That was what he did. Uh, it I mean, was he, amazing. You know, this is a good. Hold on. This is a good segue. I wanted to talk about this guy. I was talking this about this with Jerry Scalisi via text earlier today about about training, and Jerry is of the belief and I, and I happen to agree with him that I think a lot, not everyone, I, I'm not saying it's about everyone, but a lot of the physiques, especially the guys that have been around, you know, and, and are pros, you know, how we see like, Oh, they're losing their lats or certain things are changing. Jerry believes it's because guys are using too many machines nowadays and they're not, they're not resorting to the old free weight, basic movements like bent over barbell rows, deadlifts, they're abandoning that because there's so many great machines and all these high tech gyms that that. What do you guys think about that that theory? Let me let me say something. Larry, so yeah. I went to uh, it was uh, Lou Ferrigno did a pro show in Santa Barbara about I don't know seven years ago, and there was Ronnie Raquel and Brad Rowe, and there was three big black guys from uh, Gold's Venice who all trained with Charles Glass. And in the front lineup, um, they all looked really good. But when they turned around, Ronnie Raquel and Brad Rowe destroyed those guys. They had no backsides. And they all trained with Charles Glass, and they all trained on machines. Right. Nobody did deadlifts. Nobody, none of those guys were doing bent over rows. And you're just not going to get that full development and the density in your back without doing those heavy compound movements. And I, I think you see that more and more today. These guys are doing, a, you know, if you watch Sergio's training videos, he's doing chest supported rows and all these fancy machines, but no deadlifts, no free weights. Well, the, yeah. the other side of that, Larry, is that we don't hear any more about guys tearing their pecs or ripping vice. I mean, the, the instance of injury now is way lower than it's ever been because everybody's training on machines. They don't want to get hurt. So... I, I think there's an other side of that. The setback of getting hurt these days is so severe that you, you can't chance it. So you're gonna I don't believe that. Shit. I, I think I just call bullshit. Stuff. I'm I telling you, guys are afraid of getting hurt. I hear it all the time. So I, I don't believe you know, that. It, I, I, I haven't seen I haven't seen Randy do Ben over Rose either. Maybe is it, you know they're they, hard. They're I mean, it's like Ben over Rose are hard. I mean, I. You can go do these fancy back machines and be like Arsenal Prime. They make some really cool stuff. I mean, you feel it hit the muscle, but it's just not the same feeling as doing barbell rows. I mean, just that after you do a few sets of barbell rows, your toes and your back is just like your rectors are pumped. I mean, doing those machines is not it's just not the same. But I understand not not wanting to do them because it means it's it's taxing on your body. So I mean, I, you know, I think it does. Oh, you, you, how many times have you guys heard about people who? Say, oh, I just built my home gym at home. I spent one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on equipment, and they show you all these fancy machines they got. They don't. If I was building my own home gym, and I was in the heyday of my bodybuilding, not an old guy like I am now, I would have all every, all free weights. It would be power rack, dumbbells, bench, you know, incline bench. You know, obviously you need some leg equipment, but you need a power rack to squat. I would have. I mean, it shouldn't cost you $150,000 in equipment. It should cost about maybe 25, 30 grand if you just load it up with free weights. Your home shouldn't be filled with 15 pieces of or 20 pieces of exercise machines. Your home should be the free weights so that you can <clears throat> bare bones train there. God forbid there's a COVID ec epidemic or, or a hurricane. The gym should be where you can go if you want to use machines. I don't know why people spend all that money on machines in their house. Unless they're like older and you know what I mean, they just they, they have injuries. But I'm saying for the average bodybuilder, you know, who's competing at the Olympia level, you should have all free weights in your house. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Oh, dude, it's I call bullshit, bro. I have fucking. I do one set of leg press. 
You've seen my legs. I got striated glutes. Right, but I you're have- 60 years old, Greg. You know, it doesn't matter what you do at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you have the muscle. Right? <laughs> you, know? you built it. Most of us my built it already. Are big yeah, you did all those face. years. All those years of doing leg press with 1,000 pounds yeah, and stuff. You don't have to do them anymore. Yeah. Well, all of us all I have up. in my gym is a, is a Smith machine, a jungle gym with, for, for the pulleys. The rest is all dumbbells, free weights, bars. That's benches. all you should need. All These I guys have. should go free back weights. to their roots. They should be training in, in, in dungeon gyms I mean, with free weights. Dave, free weights, free weights never hurt anybody. It's, it's, it's in proper form. If, right. if, if you have proper form, you could use free weights – your whole life it's it's when people start swinging and jerking and you know i mean i got news for you when i got my shoulders replaced you know Mm -hmm. just the last whatever last four or five years um i went back i go to the gym i do all free weights now of course people like i don't even use the machines anymore. the only reason i use machines is because i had injuries i love free weights i love the way it feels to dumbbell press and barbell press and squat and, and all the stabilizing muscles and everything that you I get feel so much better with yeah. my workouts. There's so much more efficient. I feel you do. Yeah. I think free weights, weights, weights are, for arm, when, shoulder when you, stuff like that. Free weights are definitely superior, but for things like there's certain things like, you know, legs, I, I, I don't think that guys can squat. Most guys don't squat right anyway. And, and I think after a while, I have squat. Never hips. So squatting fucking, you know, used to throw the old back off all Greg, the time. You're all, how tall are you, Greg? Five, six. All right. Guys that are shorter can get away with doing leg press and still build legs. Tall mm-hmm. guys can't do that. They don't get complete leg development otherwise. That's I'll, true. Put them, I'll put them on the leg press the way I do it. Uh, I, can, I can do squats and not anything else, and my legs get so pumped up, yeah. I don't even need leg press. I do, you know, my, don't like press the way hurts. most people do. I don't think tall guys feel the leg press the same yeah, way. Because they just guys. go, it's like a quarter rep, it's not even a real rep. Don't get me it's, wrong. I think dumbbells are superior to barbells. Like, you know what I mean? I think you should have dumbbells. Or, you know, yeah. There's nothing like dumbbells them separately. You know, that's the whole point. Yeah. The, the you know, but, is- but, but at the same time, when you're doing like chest presses, there is something about being able to use more weight in a barbell than than. I don't know. I have no. I don't know what it is. But the, I like both. Together. It's still you're stabilizing yeah, it, with both. I mean, you it are. Matter. Yeah, but you can I use more weight. Everything. I think you know. It just it. it it seems to stimulate in a different way, but it's also just as effective. If you, you just think don't about it, about though, training crazy. The guys don't train crazy. Like, you know, load up the leg press. Hey, let's do drops that drops that drops that then load them all back. I never see anybody at any gym ever anymore, you know, training crazy. Like I can't do that. I have too many injuries. Most of us have too many injuries, oh. but when you're younger, you definitely should train nuts. Like go balls to the wall. No one does that. I don't see it oh. ever. Arm I mean, on the tripod or camera, spotters. you know. You need two spotters, bro. I agree with that. I still, yeah, I still you can't go it. balls to the wall with it with just one. You need two spotters. That way you can strip the weight and, and do drop sets and all that. You know, uh, you, need, you need to get rid of the fucking cell phone. I mean, it's unbelievable. These fucking get kids the cell phone in. How many times have you seen guys? Hold on. How many times have you seen guys on the leg press or even squatting with their. They got the knee wraps on the neoprene knee wraps and they're bouncing off the bottom. Boom, boom, like a spring. And they're like, and I did 25 reps with, with, with 405. Well, you and, know, and the no, seats the, all the way up. The knee wraps did. And, and the seats all the way up instead of all the way down. So it's no, it's like hitting their midsection and they're bouncing. Momentum thing. You can't just go through the motions yeah. and say, hey, here's my numbers. I have them written out of my book. I have to grow. No, you don't have to grow because if you don't feel it in the muscle and you're using momentum and you're cheating, Okay, then you're not going to get any results out of it. It doesn't matter what you've written down in your little logbook there. No, well, you know it's what I what say. Your body I, feels. I have a little. I have a little saying. I say, okay, uh, if you're lifting for strength, you want to make heavy weight light. If you're lifting for power, you need explosive strength. You need to make the heavy weight as light as possible. If you're bodybuilding, you want to stimulate as many fibers as possible. Yeah. You want to make a light weight as heavy as possible. Sure. Absolutely. You got to control that negative. You got to put the cell phone down first. They fucking do a set. <laughs> well, let's hey, go to the west side. Greg, the cell phone's side. not going anywhere. Yeah. So well, don't Greg, I got one for you. Greg, Greg, I got one for you. You're going to love this. I saw this on uh, Instagram. Somebody had their camera set up, and he's doing something, and someone walks right over to the camera and cuts a fart. And it's all recorded. It's so uh, funny. <laughs> The, the thing it's is, so you funny. have to do both. You I mean, have to do the cell phone for all your sponsors, though. 
You, you don't get you don't, you don't get paid. <laughs> no, but these guys ain't got cell phone ain't going sponsors. anywhere, Greg. You sorry they, to, to break this. But they don't have sponsors. These are right. guys. Most that of them don't. Like, yeah. Most of them there. Don't. I'm like, what could you possibly be looking? If you're in, when I'm in a workout, bro, I'm in a workout. I call, I have like zero rest. Greg, here. hold on, hold on, Greg. You work out at like two in the morning. No one's awake to talk to, so you know. <laughs> no, but I do go. There are people in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, you no show her the <laughs> video your workouts, Greg. You should go live. I should. You should. But uh, you <laughs> no know what it is? Away. I, do, I do no rest period. I'm so awake. I'll, I'll take 10 seconds rest sometimes between sets. But the thing is, these fucking guys, you're trying to get on a machine. I'm like, what What are you yeah. looking at, though? What could you possibly do a set and then sit there like this for fucking 10 minutes? Hey, what you, are, you, are you looking at chicks? Are you fucking, are you reading something? Are you on your fucking Instagram or... Are you fucking on TikTok looking at fucking videos? What could you, how could you be focusing on your workout when you're fucking on that phone? That's what I want to know. It's fucking they're creating crazy. content, Greg. It's, what content? But these aren't even, but these aren't even true bodybuilders because otherwise they'd be fucking, they would be focusing on the Greg, workout. I saw, just to cut you, I saw West, the, the new documentary on West Side Gym in Ohio. West yeah. Side Barbell. Yeah, West yeah, Side Barbell. Yeah, Louis and, Simmons place. Right. And he was showing how, how, he developed some new techniques, you know, one because when they were going super heavy all the time, they were losing strength. And then they then they switched it up and it would go down, they would use a, a lighter weight and go down go down a little bit slower, you know, like one, two, three, four, and then with a, with an explosive um, you know, it was pretty interesting watching him. I mean, he he those he he must have had about ten back surgeries, that guy. Yeah, he's yeah, but yeah, he, yeah. powerlifting is supposed to be three seconds down, one second up, and like strength training would be like, uh, or or bodybuilding would be like, you know, four seconds down, two seconds up. I agree, but I nobody. Agree. How many? How many of you guys? We're all professionals. How many of you guys ever really see people do a four second negative? Honestly, they never. I mean, when I used to train, people used to come over and think I was stuck. They'd be trying to like, I'm like, don't touch the weight. Because I would be <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, don't touch it. I mean, all these little like skinny guys would come over and say, and, and start putting their hands. I'm like, don't touch it, which and, completely and ruins Dave, your mind. That's when you stimulate the most uh, fibers. Is, yep. is is when you're controlling the negative Absolutely. part of the rep. Mahalik showed me that, and he was yeah. he was training athletes like that. Yeah. He was training yeah. like he was training 100 100 meter runners. He'd have them yeah. go down super super slow, and then explode. Up yeah, right. Yes, That's they exactly. can. Yeah. I yeah. actually build a movement into an isometric where I count. I'll sometimes count to 20, and I could be in the middle of a set, and you would think I'm stuck. And I tell people, I'm not stuck. You know what I mean? It's that I'm actually holding it in, in a position, in a flex position. I'll try to do 10 seconds. I count. Pause, you know, pause, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it, I mean, it John, gets, you, John, you notice the way Greg trains as though he's got the Olympia coming up every night. <laughs> like, I do. You would think the guy, always, but, but you that's think the guy always with the meter ready. He's always been that way. There's no, he's not going to change. Right. He's I got old. Listen, I know, I, but he might as well compete at this point. Why is he competing? Wait a minute. I don't know. That would, okay. be, a, that would be a Greg. Good thing. Well, let's, let's, let's all take a look at Greg's arms. Greg. I would love to see what your arms look like right I'll now. I'll do it. I'll do a video. I'm not going to take it off here. We got to do that uh, right. surgery for him. To, uh, I mean, but, yeah, because no funny thing. Listen, let me tell you something. The thing is with me, I can't go to the gym, right? I can't go to the gym and just say, well, you know, I'm a little sore. Or I'm a little tired today. I'm just going to take it easy. It's either all or nothing. And it's never nothing. I, I, I don't miss workouts. My girlfriend will tell you. I mean, I have to be really sick or fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my friends can tell you stories about me doing leg presses with blood shooting out of my fucking Ooh. nose. Why, why, don't why don't you compete? Going. Why don't you do the Masters Nationals? Nah, I don't want to do I, I why? can't. Because of his arms, Dave. Why don't his, you, Dave? Arms his arms can't look great after all that surgery. I mean, Dave, you're fixed up. Surgery? Yeah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have heart surgery. surgery. No heart surgery. My surgery. No. It was. It was more no, like. Wait. Let me use this dull hatchet and see what I can no do. Way. Greg, you never, had that. That. <laughs> you never had that. You never had that. Let me hack away at my arm with a dull hatchet and it's see what, there. And that was what like, I get. That was see what. Long see long what I end up with after after a couple. That years was like 2001. I I mean that's so fucking long ago. You know what I mean? Plastic like, surgeon everything. will fill it right up with filler. And make it <laughs> right. Armand's got oh, some stuff. Have, yeah. But the thing is, 
it's not that though. It's not that. I mean, my, I look good. My arms are pretty jacked. My fucking whole body's pretty jacked. But the nice. thing is, I do the legs. Want, Show that? us the legs, Greg. Show us the legs, Greg. I, Come on, I can't, stand up. I, I stand on a chair. Stand up. <laughs> no, stand stand up. Come on. Get your phone. Get your phone and just hold it. Yeah, just put the phone down lower. Come on. Hey, Greg, it's my birthday. Do it for me. What do you say? It is. Happy <laughs> birthday. Is it really your birthday? Your birthday? I didn't yeah. Know. What are you, 50? Take it off next time. Oh, wow. Of Dave and he'll post oh, it. Oh, he's young. How about that? What's that? To take did, take a picture and send it to Jay next time, and we'll post it. How about I'll he, do a little video, and I'll talk to you guys. Like, look, right. here I am. You guys have to right, right, right. my legs. All right, all right. Because, I, I mean, there's nowhere for me to – I. He's not yeah, hold on, That's shut up for true. a second, Greg. Shut up. If you're not going to show us your legs, shut up. Uh, <laughs> I mean, 50 <laughs> years old. I'm 50, That's a big man. one. That's hey, a big one. Wow. Greg, if you do it, I'll do it. Hey, hey, All right. Sounds hey. Good. Well, while you got me on, that. while you got me on, I just want to make a little announcement to everybody. I'm offering a special $99 a month for my coaching. If you want to contact me, guru amin ali at gmail.com. I'll send you an information form. Send it back. $99 a month. You can't beat that. I feel really good. At 50 years old, I want to get back. A lot of positive things are happening right now. I can't get into too much detail, but for all those people that are haters thinking that I was going to go to jail, got bad news for you. Right I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk. All right. we're we're so guys, mine's, a mine's 1995, and you can go to <laughs> <laughs> He's allowed a shameless plug on his birthday. Uh, Armand. Give yeah. it <laughs> you look like you're 30. You look good. Thank you, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. You know, I mean, I, I got to say that I just like Dave, Dave looks incredible, too. He heals good. I think all of us live the lifestyle. We practice what we preach. You know, we eat good. We we try to have positive thoughts. We You know, we try to give back. For me, honestly, the, the, the what makes me feel good is giving back. If, if I can't help other people, then I, I start feeling, you know, depressed or something like that. It's when I get to start helping people, when I get to coach more people. I have software, too, now that allow me to take 100 clients. Still, every person that wants to hire me gets a phone call. We talk one-on-one -on -one directly. Once a month, you get a phone call with me. And basically, it's not for bodybuilding necessarily. Anybody that wants to lose weight, get ready for the summer, look good. Just feel better about themselves. It's it good as my girlfriend's lips are around my penis. Uh, yeah, happy, bur happy birthday, me. <laughs> By the way, I want to give oh, since we're giving plugs. Oh, I want to give Mr. G. Mr. G sent me this box of cookies. Mr. John, G. Uh, this is the, this is the right final. Here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This, this is, is the dope. final um, rendition of what he's going to be selling. These are the cookies. Hold on, let me get a full one here. Wait, I, I got to. I got to. After you tell me, I got. I have this. Don't let. Let me tell the story All after. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Hold on. So here's the cookie. This is they're gonna be like Chips Ahoy size cookies, and they're gonna come in a tin, right? Mr. Right. G, is no, that correct? They'll come like Chips Ahoy, like in the in the in I the just said that. You bought, yeah, not in a tin. You know, in the in the no, in the, in the, in the, the same you tray that they come in for a tray, a plastic tray. You could, this way, you can get like yeah. you're gonna get like 18, 18 cookies. I ate about, and, I ate about we're 10 make, cookies already. We're gonna make it affordable for everyone, so. How much of these? Um, I mean, how many grams of protein in each cookie like this? Those yeah. that you got, yeah. I, I, probably twelve. I've eaten about ten of them, so I got my I protein in. Yeah, well, the, the, the issue is you can't. You you have. There's a balance between taste and how much protein and how they're going to taste. So you they're can't. Really good. Yeah, I'll, 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 we're making this for everyone. You got fiber, right? You got fiber in it too. No, unless I use uh, these, whole. Oh. These are the keto. You don't want to put too much fiber in them because you'll. Put okay, I was, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, these are the keto cookies. He makes them with isolized, and he's got pistachio nuts in there. What are you using? Yeah, almond flour. Yeah. Almond, yeah, you got to use almond flour because and, almond. Is there macadamia nut oil in there? Too? <laughs> Can't use oil in it. No. 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 Oil. Oil. Use some butter. Butter. We use. We use the. We use the omega three eggs too. I mean, nice. I use all the high end, the, the highest of the end, but it got to bring. Ooh. The whole idea is to bring to bring it down to make it smaller, you know. So this way you'll eat less, make them big anyway. And it, How much it, is it? Your kids. So instead have. of selling one big cookie, you're selling a tray of cookies. Yeah, right? so whole like, and, and not only that, talk about marketing. We can we can market on the whole packet. You know, we want I hear to my mother-in-law in the background. Somebody tell <laughs> <my> <laughs> How much is it? How much is it? Whose dog is barking? Whose dog is, barking? Whose dog is that? Whose dog? Oh, is that's that's mine. Oh, it's hilarious. You got my mother-in-law over there. 
<laughs> yeah. Hey, it, God, tell your story. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so Jake, what was it? Two weeks ago, Jake. week ago, two weeks ago, we had that other dude on the bald guy with with the gym. Yeah, Jim Chain. What was the yeah. name? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so the the, the 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 show's over. I shut my computer. You know, I shut my laptop, and then I, I put it in the dock. And I, I was going to get something to eat, and I flipped the, the the cover open so it would turn on and shift over to the to the to the big screen. So I'm I'm in the kitchen. And I'm hearing voices <laughs> on my computer, and it's it's Mr. G and what they were still talking. Say They're still about. talking, and all I hear is him saying to Mr. G, "Just do the cookie. You just gotta focus on the cookie." <laughs> So I'm imagining, I'm imagining Georgie's telling him about, you know, um, peptide pretzels and, yeah, and yeah. you know, all the other shit he's going to make. And it's another <laughs> successful businessman saying, focus on the cookie. You know? <laughs> That's great. He's my man. Did he give you any uh, good uh, advice, uh, George? Yeah. Focus on the cookie. Uh, no, I mean... Nothing that I was already already doing anyway. It's an evolution, John. I know, George. You get always you get hey. too sensitive over. I'm no, just, I'm not getting no. Hey, hey, John, I'm not, hey, I always try. Look, I always have tried to help you. I critique your recipes. You send me any. No, I know that, John. I always help you. I love you. You know what? You know you're my brother, it's a, John. I, just, it's a, I want to just see you win because you've been doing this for so freaking long. Hey, I'm good. I'm going to win. Was, I've already I'm, won. All right. I've, I, I've already won. I mean, so I mean, I. I have a platform. First of all, I got a huge platform to to launch anything I do. But I want to do it the right. I want to do it the right way. Now it's gonna. This is everything is leading to this point, you know, because we got to make it affordable for everyone. Everyone. How much you know, is it? I want this to be like a a product that that people take home and their families, the kids can have, you know, the grandparent, everyone can have, and also show people smaller portions as well. You know. How do we get it? How do we get it? How much is it? We're not getting it. it not till we're we're not out yet. It's not out yet. Okay. Dave just Dave, Dave kind of just I knew he just showed it he wasn't supposed to, but he did it anyway. So. <laughs> I thought that's why you sent it to me. No, 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 no. We always do no. that to him. We're always letting his cats not, out of the bag. Look, I, I, <laughs> I'm I getting people excited about it. It's like a movie. You got to show able, previews yeah, know, to the movie. Here's the issue: you got to be able to. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna be a, a huge billion dollar healthy snack business, I got to be able to produce the stuff. I got to be able to market it. I'm going to be able to push it out in, le in, in less than two days to the customer. So all these things, unless we're ready to do that, then it's just the way, then I'm just, just making stuff out of my own kitchen. And that, that's fine too. If someone's, but that's not the model. If you can't push the stuff out quick enough, you know, and have the proper packaging, then forget it, you know? So what, so what are we waiting for? What, what's, what's your, what's your neck? What's your, we're, where we're, we at? we're putting on we're putting all the all, all the all the marketing stuff, all the uh, art and stuff for the packaging. Who, who, who is we? Who is we? Yeah, who's we? It's it's. Uh, I got a one silent partner. Now I can't say anything about the person. Now I got my my partner who does all the all the uh, all the marketing, drawing, all the designing. You Your know, girlfriend. yeah, because you know she's she's brilliant. Where do you see the? Where do you see our character? Where do you see the whole thing? It's going to be great. He's got another like, character he made up, George. Mr. Uh, G, are you, are you no. able to keep the price point with the top, with the you know, with the quality ingredients? I mean, organic, yeah. organic, everything. That's, I'm not that's using. I'm not, I'm, not, oh, I'm not using. We're not using organic. I'm not using. If if we do organic, that'll that'll drive the price. Yeah. First, exactly. first of all, organic costs three times the amount of money. Exactly. So there has there has to be a you you know it, it it depends what I'm going to be it has to be a balance we sort of want to be like Entenmann's cookies sure you know Entenmann's cookies and make it healthier yes yes and make it and not and not put preservatives in it exactly that means if we don't put preservatives in it that means we have to be able to get it out quick uh, is packaging gonna go gonna, are you going to have to cryo back it like you like suck all the air out in your packaging we're going to have the well we're going to have the packaging you know we where inside it'll be it'll be inside it'll be like a clamshell inside so it'll be like when you buy the chips ahoy but we're gonna have a we're gonna have another p package on top another shell on top of that to, to preserve the freshness then that'll be sealed then you'll have the outside covering 
that you could actually, you know, that you see the Chips Ahoy, the pullback. Dude, I've I mean, been using ice lines. I've I mean, been using ice lines. He's got real shit ingredients. Yeah, there's nice. No, I'm saying, you're using ice lines. Let me tell you about ice lines. Let me tell you about, I'll tell you about why. Buckets of that stuff. Dave, Dave is using a hydro isolate, a micro uh, way. Yeah, it's the and, best. And as a result, it it mixes better, and it and the flavoring has a better because the vanilla we can use in everything. Right. It has a better it has a better flavoring, especially when you're not using any sugar and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's going to give it a good flavoring. It also people who have uh, um, la are lactose intolerant and stuff, which right. is can can actually eat eat the product. It doesn't affect them, you know. So I mean, yeah, it's these, are whole, these are a whole these are a whole bunch of things man. that I had to figure out of going along the way, you know. Well, I, you know, when I made isolized um, protein, I really yeah. made it for myself <laughs> because I was I'm very very lactose intolerant, and I said right I, you there. Know, I I didn't want there you go, and I didn't want to go to a, a pea protein or a plant protein because they suck. You know you know you know that and people can rat Arnold's on this whole. Plant yeah, I just saw. I just saw. Dave. I don't even know what he's doing. I Arnold. just saw his documentary. You can't build muscle with with plants. Arnold's protein. full so, of shit. He opened we, up. His what's he talking about? I was going to talk. What's he saying? No, I love about? Arnold, but but you know he's he's obviously marketing something else. But Arnold's drinking is, the Kool Aid. He's drinking the. As a bodybuilder, we know you need animal source of protein. So I know we needed to use whey, and whey tastes really good because it's neutral. It has no taste. So what I did was I went to Glambia, the company that makes you know all the whey isolate and all the whey protein in this. Pretty much, they're the biggest one. And I said, "What's the highest grade? The meaning, the most filtered way you could possibly get that would remove the most lactose possible?" And they said, "You know, that's our whatever ninety three I or whatever they called it." And I said, "I want that because I I have to be able to, and I need to use it for myself." And they said, "Well, this is the most expensive one. No one buys this one." I said, "Well, I, I'm going to buy it because I can sell it. I don't care." Well, why so did you with an egg, Dave? Because too, it's more expensive, and egg it tastes salty. It doesn't. You it can't does. give it a good it's taste. Salty, yeah. But but this is important to know. These other companies can buy the same isolate that I do. It's not that I had yeah. access to something that no one else does. I'm just crazy enough to buy the most expensive one. No one wants to do it because they figure, you know what? No one knows anyway. We'll put a we'll put a lower grade isolate in there. We'll save a couple bucks a, a jug, right. and make more profit on it. And no one knows anyway anyway. But the people who are lactose intolerant know. Because they get they get you know farts and they start getting yeah. diarrhea from it. And then when you when you don't absorb the protein or digest the protein properly, you malabsorb it. So you wind up you know losing a lot of the protein that you think you're consuming. So when you think you're getting a great deal at Price Club because you bought <laughs> ten pounds of protein for thirty bucks, it, but you're shitting it out. You're not even absorbing it. You're <laughs> Greg Valentinoing it. You know, it's so hard to tell people that sometimes. One of the good things about term, by the way, Greg Valentino, Greg Valentino doesn't get shits from this. That's like, right. You, you, you use isolized. That's what, right. One of the great yeah, things just, about no I mean, protein. I'm using part. this shit. It's not like I'm holding up a fucking. You know what I mean? And, and why are you going to? I know you use it. Why are you going to sell something, Dave? Why are you going to say sell something that you don't use? It's like I'm not going to make a cookie that care. I don't they like. Just make money, George. They don't it's give a bullshit. shit. They and you're not. And you're not really doing what you're supposed. To, you're not selling a real product. Dude, Dude I'm at what? George's kitchen, and he has uh, real deal stuff there. Uh, I'll, I I'm going to tell you a true story. I'm not going to mention names, but I know a guy who works for a company that sells a fiber supplement who buys mine. The reason I know it because my Somebody. wife processes all the orders. Oh. He works for the company. He's their sales guy, and he buys my. My fiberized product, <laughs> and they have a fiber product, so it happens. I have I, there are pro Dave, bodybuilders that buy my protein, and they work for other supplement companies. It's one of the things about about species, especially with the ice lies, that I could say is that a lot of companies start off good, and then they end up doing unethical practices like amino spiking and things like that. You stayed consistent your this entire time. You've had species. It's always been consistent. It's always been top quality. You've never tried to amino spike or anything like that. So I think your, your reputation stands for itself. I honestly, I recommend I, uh, your, your products. Mo most, any, to anyone that needs it, I recommend them. Your MAC oil, th there's no MAC oil on the market. I've tried them all. Or I've imported MAC oil too. There's no MAC oil I've ever tried that has the buttery taste that yours does. Your mac oil has a has a unique buttery taste that nothing else has. All of your products, you, it's it's very clear if anyone's ever tried them. 
you really take the time to make it something that you want. Just like you say in your advertisement, you know, you really make it top quality for what you want. And it, it, it shows. They really hey, are. I got to tell you, I take species for my feces right here. <laughs> <laughs> I take species for my feces. I but take you know this what? shit every day. I swear to God. And I don't we all do. No, no more diarrhea, bro. No shit. That stuff. <laughs> no shit. It, 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 does, it regulates you. So if you go diarrhea. too much, it slows it down too. Yeah. Yeah. But you know well, what happens? Look at these companies that make gear. They come out of the gate. They have the top quality gear. They're using the right dosing. <laughs> they put the right drugs in. And then they realize, hmm. I can make double the money if I put half as much in, or if I use <laughs> use something like test propionate instead of Primabol or, or something like that. And so they start making way more money. People already bought the Kool Aid, so to speak. And that's why you have companies that out there that are selling crappy steroids because they are greedy and they want to make more money. And that's just the way our world works, unfortunately, for most people. You know, you about about the the you is, is top normal. quality gear. <laughs> you know, you know what the problem is. I'll tell you what the that's problem is. That's from the pharmacy. That's yes. that's, pharmacy. Yes. that's that's good stuff. Because, you can uh, tell hey, one from PBS and compounding ones. You can tell the difference. Um, Hold that uh, up, Greg. You know, Dave. I recommend to everybody to get yeah, your test right, right there. Right there. Yeah, got the little C three on it. The yeah, controlled three substance. Uh, uh, Greg, how much do you take a week? Uh, I take two hundred milligrams every ten days. Wow, the whole bottle. I mean, Used to take the whole bottle. Yeah. And oh, dude, this would be. I would take this bottle on Monday. Then I would take it again on Wednesday. A whole another brand new one. <laughs> and then I take another one on Friday. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, ten cc, two hundred milligrams. I can't. You know, and you know what, Greg? With that stuff, because it's pharmaceutical. Back in the day, you wouldn't get welts, and you wouldn't. It would actually kind of go. It would go in you, unlike yep. the stuff that's now. Oh yeah, this. But I took steroids back in the day, so I was yeah, taking well, steroids. Is real. I remember when all the stairs was going around. Well, you can thank me and a few others for that. Yeah. Right there. yeah. You got all these questions. Hey, I did an injection and swelled up. Like, but that's not supposed to happen when you take no. the testosterone. No, as, as a matter of fact, Armand, a lot of clients that I got, this uh, I announced this 99 thing uh, 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 last week on Instagram. It was very successful. A lot of the clients that I have are taking stuff and they're telling me how they're getting these welts and how it's not going down. And I'm just like, stop everything. No more injections. Don't take yeah. anything else. Go buy the Roy kit. See if it's yeah. real. But even, even still, it may have the active ingredient in it, but there could be something else that causes the inflammation. Yeah. I mean, you know, using seed oils may not be the best thing. Yeah. Nice, Greg. Nice. Can't they go to a, a, a uh, my, you know, uh, can't they go to a regular doctor? Greg, you see the advantage of turning sixty, you could actually get real testosterone from a we know what it's good. Good. I got that bottle. CBS. Look, CBS. It's the it's the compounding. If they don't do it right, if they don't put the right amount of BA and, exactly. and, Larry, and Larry and John. Larry knows. Yeah, if they don't put the right, right. amount of benzoyl alcohol in it and That's benzoyl benzoate in it, then then it messes up That's the product. Insoluble. And if they don't filter it right, then it's not sterile. The Larry, can I ask you a question? Does it matter what seed oil it's in? Like, does it matter if it's grape hmm. seed oil or, 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 you know, these other seed oils that, that could cause inflammation? Or is it filtered to the point where the grape seed oil doesn't cause any inflammation? If it, I use grape seed oil always because I, it's just real smooth and it's easy to filter. Um, I think those heavier oils like cottonseed oil that they use in pharmaceuticals, right. it's, too, it's too thick. It's too thick, yeah. Uh, the MCT. I was I was just about to say to Armand, what do you think about this new trend with everybody using MCT oils in their underground lab? I don't think it, it's it's not so much the the oil as as how you do it. It has to be filtered properly, and you have to have the right ratios of benzyl alcohol and benzyl benzoate with the amount of uh, raws all mixed together. And I think what uh, most places do is they don't know how to measure it out properly, or they don't use it benzoyl alcohol and benzo benzoate because they either don't have it or it's expensive or whatever the deal is. And um, they just don't make it right. I've never, I never had anybody get any, even a welt infection, anything from any gear that I had. I mean, and, it's uh, so common for like, yeah, kids I know, or clients say that they take gear. They're like, 
Yeah, my yeah. buddy makes it. My buddy, everybody just makes everybody it. Everybody, like everybody. they everybody. haven't even been in the gym a year, and they're making their own gear. They just put yeah, but if you don't, they order all the raws, they make their gear and their friends. Jesus, gear. really? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. like so, and it's so not Larry, real. Larry Armand, I have a question for both of you. You know, you're buying kilos of raw from China. Okay, you're getting this crystal like substance everybody knows that the crystals look different anavar looks different than primo winstrel looks they all they all look a little bit different right but how do you know that that's pure i mean you can have a crystal that could be 96 percent roy test has it because roy test about I, it. well yeah. i used to have a lab in utah and i'd send every batch to the lab and right. they test it what were you getting what, 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 what were what were you getting percentage wise purity everything was good like ninety nine percent? Are we talking 90, 98, 99? Well, no, they would they would test for purity. They just after I finished compounding it, they test for the the milligrams per dosage, and I knew right. I, okay. I dosed it correctly. I didn't send the raws in for testing. I'd send the finished product in for testing. Okay, okay. I, <clears throat> I sent the raws in for testing. And what did you get, John? Ninety in the ninety eights. Ninety eights, wow. which is the difference between pharmaceutical, which is ninety nine point nine. Five or better in pharmaceutical, and I, I'm, I believe that that one percent makes a difference. If you're getting, what, it what is that one percent? What is what's the ingredient? A lot or, of times, it, it, a lot of times, or, it could just be, it, it could just, be, it could be water. I mean, it's there's there's all kinds of stuff that gets, you know, absorbed into into the powder. To get in the ninety nines, you know, is, <laughs> is, is a is a difficult task, but you know. Look, you're, you're doing business with companies in China, right. and you have to develop a relationship with one of the people that work there and maintain that relationship if you're ever going to get anywhere with, you know, with your raw orders. I was lucky enough to get <clears throat> referred to uh, an agent by someone else who had been doing this for a long time, a friend of the show's. And, um, you know, I was really fortunate. And, you know, when I sent my stuff when I sent my stuff to the lab in Mexico to get tested for for purity, that <clears throat> it was you know high ninety eights was was usually ninety eight eight ninety eight nine a couple times in the ninety nine, not not none that I, the um you know I used to test in the ninety nines all the time was EQ Equipoise because yeah. it was like it was like gel when that stuff came. Yeah, it comes you pretty much almost liquid. Of, it's almost yeah, liquid. Yeah. yeah. So let me, you, let me ask the question. The, the, the big question is, is, is 200 milligrams of 99.9, .9, the stuff that, that Greg is showing right now, is 200 milligrams of that any different than 200 milligrams of 98%? Wait. I say no. I this say is no. what? This is different from you guys because I do a 22-gauge fucking needle, bro. Right <laughs> so, there. So, so 200 milligrams. Fact, I'm out you know what? According to Bruce Neller, he says that all the pharmaceutical companies buy from China too. So they everyone, it's, I was, it's fact. I wanted to leave his name out of it, but yeah, they that's, he, that's said it. he said it. But don't, but don't they send? Don't they send them the better batch? Nope. No, they, it's the no. same batch. Really? It's just these oh, people a, wait, it wait, 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 How many different pharmaceutical wait, wait, companies do you think there are in China? There's a, there's, probably, there's a veterinary. There's a veterinary grade, and then there's the human grade. That's right. that's the differentiation. I like if you're getting human grade raws from China. That they're all the same. They're all the same. The Whether you're there, the are you talking about EQ? EQ still. Blow. Everything. Are you talking about Equipoise? All the pharmaceuticals. Bruce said the same thing about GH. He goes. GH is GH. It's it's just as cheap to make GH as to make GH releasing you know hormone. So if you're buying GH from a reputable source, it's going to be growth hormone. There's not one better than the other. It, it, it is Dave, either is Dave. GH or it's not GH. You know there there are people that are taking like low doses in my consideration. What we for for I use and they're talking about getting their hands numb. Are they just one of the few people that do it, or is it something else that's making their hands numb? Because look, we've taken growth. I've taken I, I've had people, you know, advise I mean, all I mean, that has, it has nothing to do with the growth. Some people have carpal tunnel and, yeah. and they okay, just get inflammation in their in their wrists and that makes their hands numb. It, but so many, so many, I guess because more people have access to it, it seems like more people that are getting these blue, I don't know what top, the blue top, red top, whatever it is, not pharma, they're the ones that seem to be getting this carpal tunnel issue when people that are taking like nortotropin or genotropin, they're taking high doses and they're not really getting that. So I, I think they're just used to taking it, you know, because if you stop, like, 
uh, 2020, I didn't work out the whole year. I didn't take any GH or any GH stuff. This past uh, – two years ago, I started back on my product, Ceramax, which is MK, and I could not sleep, and I, my hands hurt so bad. And it took about four months for that to just go away, and that's not even from GH. That was from a Secretagog, the Ceramax that I, that I sell. So you're so, pro with the carpet tunnel? Did you have this before when you were taking growth, or is this new? No, I, I, when I first started taking growth when I was younger, I had it, and then it, and it went away, and my body got used to taking the GH, and then I, I always took a low dose. I've never had carpet tunnel, but I had a yeah, training partner who did, and he took the growth, and he literally couldn't lift the bars. Like hands, he had to yeah. drop the bars. Like I can't, I can't train. I'm like, why? I didn't. I know. never took growth in my life, and I had to have two hand surgeries on both hands. Oh, I don't yeah. think. It, yeah. I, in other words, I don't think it matters. I think after a while, of years of lifting, you develop. Like I had all kinds of like, you know, like the muscle in my hand. I have very heavy hands, so like the doctor was saying, "Holy shit, you're." You know, because it was pressing. I get to like almost like trigger finger and all right. that shit. Look, I'm very my, tight. My palms. People have tight joints will notice that more. Like I have very loose joints. I never got that. But what I did get when I took GH initially early on in my career in the 90s, right. my my wisdom teeth would move. And what? I had to have my wisdom teeth pulled out. Every time that, I took a cycle of GH, my, I, my wisdom teeth would start moving around and it would drive me crazy. Was so. that neutrop or was that neutropin? Because I remember we were all getting the neutropin without the labels with that guy. Yeah, was, this was before. Was this is when I was using humotrope. Yeah, when it was in the in the six pack in the in the box. Yeah, yeah, the six yeah. The bricks of those things. Yeah, bricks, yeah, they were bricks, yeah, those were the days, man. Two twenty five, two twenty five a, a box, and we were fortune. Yeah, <laughs> if your GH is one ninety one amino acid, and it's real, then it's it's going to be the same. Yeah. It has to be. Okay, so Larry, let me let me ask you something. Is this stuff from China with the blue tops and no labels that come in, you know, 100 one, items? Yeah, 100 100 percent it's real. Yeah. I had it tested. I've had serum GH tested on multiple people. It's 100% real. Is there and any difference in your opinion between that and no, like more to No. Zero. You know, Larry, I think it's important to, to preface. So it's either 100% real or it's a hundred percent fake. Correct. And the way you, you know, the only way you can tell is though I sell those GH right. testing kits. Um, you know, which yeah, I've used. I've testing. used your GH it's a test. It has to. It's 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 real or it's not. You're you stupid if you don't spend there's the money. Ways, test it. Yeah. There's two ways you could tell. You could use the test kit, which I've done that yeah. too, and I've also had people just take ten units and then go get a serum GH it's test a couple yeah. hours later. And if your well, GH is not do that super too, high, though. then then it's not right. Some people don't release G as the IGF one as as no not IGF one you no, can get a serum GH test. But it's got to be within twenty minutes. No, no, it, you take ten units of GH and two hours later you get a serum GH test, yeah. and and it's it's yeah. if it's really it's high you know hours. your GH is there. I it's, thought it got broken down before. like in twenty minutes to somatomedin C. I, I, you know, I, I think a lot of people have variability on those tests. I, I just think they're not accurate. I'd rather, personally, I would rather know if it's real or not, you know, and then and then go from there. That's the best way Nate, to do it. This is this is what I don't understand, Larry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask all, all you guys, Armand, everyone here, us. Okay, Humatro had to be refrigerated from when it was at the factory to the pharmacy to when you use it. When you yeah. use it, it's got to be in the fridge. You got to keep it refrigerated or else it'll turn cloudy if you shake it. All these things that were so intricate with the original growth hormone, the only change, in, uh, okay, uh, uh, neutropin AQ, which we all had, which right. was already mixed. It didn't get right. cloudy. You could shake it. It was very stable, okay? Yeah. And then, and then the only real evolution after that would be serostem and serostem is not approved for kids it's approved for adults that have hiv so there's a little bit of a difference and that's because it's filtered through the uh, mammalia cell membrane not the entire process so that the, the filtration part is a little bit different but that one doesn't have to be refrigerated at all so my my thinking is 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 china duplicating that because it's, it's it's being sent it's not being refrigerated it's not getting weaker because if it was humotrope and you sent it and it took a week it would be like almost nothing it would be like do you remember like dave, you, dave if your humotrope got room temperature didn't it get destroyed let, let larry talk and then i'll give you the answer do you remember right. gentropins yeah the original gentropins that came from china yep okay and those with these were 100 percent legit and they were like super strong gh yes Okay, that guy who made them worked for the company Genetech, 
and he made their growth hormone, but they weren't paying him. So he went to China and he started his own company and he made the Gintropins and they became the number one selling uh, growth hormone in the world at the time. Yes, I remember this. And and they were not refrigerated. They didn't need to be. So why and, did, why did they say that? Is it just I, I'm, because I'm gonna, I'm until you reconstitute it, it doesn't need to be refrigerated. That's it, yeah. Larry's right. Mo, Mo, GH in its powdered lyophilized form does not need to be refrigerated. However, if it gets heated up a little too much, because wherever they're, they're shipping it from, it, it could break down. And then when you mix it, it turns cloudy and it's denatured. So it's safer to keep it in the refrigerator because it's in a controlled cold environment. It does better like that. It lasts longer. Um, all GH has always been that. Even the, the, the Lily kits we got back in the day, they were all never shipped on ice. But the bottom line is that they don't last as long, but they never intended them to. They always put that two-year expiration date or a year expiration date on it because they don't care. But if you want your stuff to last longer, store your GH in the refrigerator. I always tell people that. But it's okay yeah. shipping? Shipping it's what? okay? Like, you know, get good coming? Yeah, as long as it's not 100 degrees outside and it's going to get warm and it's going to and it's gonna mess it up because this okay. protein hormones will denature if, they, if they're heated. The same thing much. with yeah. HG. Yeah. We used to sell Steris HG. You, yeah. you got didn't have to yeah. refrigerate Same thing. Reconstitute. Right, right. The hourglass the bottle in the refrigerator. Right? Remember the hourglass bottle, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That you was pretty it cool. together. Yeah, yeah, you push it through. Now, so, I wanted so, to say one thing. The Nootropin AQ, which was right. pre-mixed GH the green uh, by yeah. Genentech, they came up with a proprietary formula that they trademarked, patented. They found that when you put, and you know who told me this? Michael Zimpano told me this. You know, the guy who wrote the steroid handbook with, with um, Dan Deshane. Nobody knows put, that. Yeah. When you put, now they do. You, excuse me. When you add an acid, an acidic solution to the growth hormone, it causes the GH molecule, which is this big convoluted molecule, to contract on itself, making it more stable. So that's why they, it's the premix are stable and, and they don't break down. Whereas normally when you add, water when you put the water into the powder gh it has a limited life maybe two weeks three weeks the most because what happens is the water gets into this big convoluted molecule and starts breaking it apart yeah, so the gh starts it. losing its potency the aq doesn't do that it doesn't it never loses its potency so, okay, so let's visit this we talk about it all the time okay igf yeah. doesn't need to be mixed with acetic acid solution or doesn't need or can it be with back the, re yeah, the reason why they recommend that igf one is mixed with with a slightly acidic solution is because the igf molecule unlike gh is a smaller molecule and it actually can get stuck in the grooves in the glass but now you can't see the grooves. If you put a microscope, if you put a glass vial under a microscope, you'll see all these little grooves. Yeah. So you can lose some of the IGF yield, like maybe three to five percent, um, because it gets stuck in, in the grooves. Now, if you use an acidic water, like a slightly ten millimolar HCl or acetic acid, it supposedly prevents that IGF molecule from sticking in the grooves of the glass. That's like the only And one. then with growth hormone, <laughs> let's just say. <laughs> Let's just say growth hormone, if you're going to use it over a, a longer period, bacterial <clears throat> static water or sterile, does it matter? Bacterial doesn't static. matter, really. Yeah, I mean, assuming no. the solution is sterile to begin with, uh, bacteria static is obviously always safer just in case you're using it. You know, like Greg used the same needle over and over, and if you put a little bacteria into the bottle, the bacteria static water will kill the, that bacteria. So that's okay, not so making it longer. It's just making it safer. Does it make it use. last longer? It just makes right. it safer, right? It's, it's, it's when you're using about a multiple, and using a multiple use vial, it, and you're you're sticking the needle back into the same bottle. It's better yeah. to have bacterial static water exactly. in the bottle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the rumors about about serostem lasting longer. Uh, if you use bacterostatic water, that's we denounce yeah. that. So that's you want to know why they did that? Yes. So like Theristim comes out with this thing. We're going to sell GH to AIDS patients. <clears throat> and we're going to get Medicaid to pay for the whole thing, which they did. Yes, exactly. And we're going to tell them we're going to make these boxes of 18 IU bottles. We're going to put seven in, in a box because that's a, a week supply. You're going to take one bottle per day which no one really would because no one can take 18 IUs of GH today, especially these AIDS patients. But what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to put in a sterile water bottle. And right. what we're going to do is we're going to tell them because they're immunocompromised, the second you stick a needle into that bottle, no matter how sterile, you got to throw the rest of it away, whatever you don't use. So 
The AIDS patients were drawing four IUs out like most people do, taking the four IUs, throwing the rest of the bottle away, the other 12 IUs or whatever, 14 IUs. And then the next day they'd open the next bottle and they were getting Medicaid was getting, was paying for four of these boxes per month. Which right. were fifteen hundred dollars you know a month. They were getting jacked. They were the biggest guys listen. in the club. Hold on, hold on. The story gets good because if Dave knows what I know, it's going to get good. Let they finish. finish. Yeah. Fifteen hundred bucks uh, per box. Right. That's a seven day supply. Four boxes a month. Three thousand dollars being charged to Medicaid. The AIDS patients go to the clinic. They get like, like a. I think they would get a month supply at a time. They get four kits each. And then the body bulls would stand outside the clinic and they would buy three of the boxes from the AIDS patients because the AIDS guys would use one box. They'd yeah. sell the other three. And then, and, and then you know, and that's where all the GH was let's, coming from. Let's it was a scam. Right all, because, all because they put sterile water in there, not bacteria static. And they say, well, AIDS patients, they have no immunity. They can't take uh, – it's, it's, they're going to get bacteria in their Dave, body and they're going to die. You know? Dave, let me ask you if you, if you if you know how they came up with it. Because I, I was in on the I, – I knew about the studies on how they came up with 18 IUs and why it's flawed. Do you know? Because I know. Well, I, I think I don't think anyone ever intended people to use 18 IUs. They just threw it in there because they figured no, – well, No, no, no. There was a reason for that. Oh, and there was? I didn't but know. Yeah, let's no. go back, okay? The, the, the bodybuilding and the gay community is very interesting. Twine, correct? Okay. So back in the day when they were doing the test, mind you, these were tests. They didn't actually have it prescribed as 18 IUs. They weren't taking it. They were selling their stuff to bodybuilders, and they were buying their recreational drug, which was yep. methamphetamine or ecstasy, and that's what they're using. So they would come back to the doctor, and the doctor would be like, oh, it's not working. So they opted it more because it started at four IUs, believe it or not. Right. And then it kept going up, 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 up to the point where – what you said was what happened. They started taking a little bit of the bottle. They started getting results. And then from that, they made the actual uh, dosage 18 use. But it's really not. But nobody takes that much. And the whole the whole uh, test were flawed because they, they weren't using it. They, they were the selling it. It was commerce. Selling. The funny thing is that they the, the Fed thought that the bodybuilders were selling GH kits to the AIDS patients. And they're like, Oh, they're in danger of their lives. <laughs> the way around. The way around. Yeah, the way I was around. in the in the early nineties. I was getting a hundred serosum kits a week. Yeah, from wow. uh, there was a bouncer. He worked at a gay club in Hollywood, and he would bring me a hundred kits a week, and I would sell them to an anti aging uh, place, some doctor. Yeah, it, do they have to jump through loopholes now? Like my gay client, he. He, he used to, you know, get a bunch of it. I've known him for 20 years. And now, he like, just for a couple kits a month, he has to do all this with his insurance. He's, still, he's paying, like, just $400 a kit himself with his insurance. They keep trying to give him peptide. I mean, it's really hard for them to get now. I mean, because the government got wise to them selling yes. it. Yeah. They figured it out, yeah. That's, That's what, what me and Dave were talking about that the other day. Let's, yeah. let's not forget that Anadrol, which was made by Syntex, and everybody remembers this. 2902, Dave. You know what I'm yep. talking about. Yeah, that was on the pill. That, that was, was on the pill. was on the pill. So Syntex actually made a subcompany called Unimed, and they sell the same anadrol right. prescribed to HIV patients yep. for literally 10 times the amount. It used to be around $75 to $85. Now it's you know $800 for a bottle. That's crazy. So yeah. what are the health benefits for, for GH as you get older? Everything. <laughs> Depending Fire on the dose. If, uh, if, if you take too much, if you take too much, it can age you. If you take too much, it can age you. If you really? take a small amount, yes, it can. It can. It well, can. If you it take can. too much, you become insulin resistant, and then what happens is you, you're not your blood sugar control is terrible. So you don't want exactly. That. The, the exactly. wheels are turning in Georgie's head. He's thinking GH cookies, <laughs> anti-aging, to white chocolate. That's no, no, no. He's going to put no, MK no. in the cookies. MK in the cookies. And it's in a powder. That's what he's uh, thinking. I'm asking you remember how Greg told, told this story? Thing. Hold on. You remember how Greg told us the story that he never took steroids? And then right. one day he, started, he was selling them, and one day he just said, ah, screw it, I'm going to take steroids. Yeah. Well, Greg has never used GH. I've never used GH. I'm a testosterone. Maybe if testosterone. you start using GH now, you'll Greg will be doing like a thousand I use a GH a day. And, <laughs> and he'll, he'll blow up. You know, be like, hey, uh, while we're on the subject of DH, Dolph Lundgren, as we spoke about last yeah. week, you know, yeah. 
it, it, we all, we, we, you, Dave, you, we all do this. If you're predisposition for cancer, if you have a family history of cancer, guess what? Don't take growth. We knew this from Dennis Newman with his leukemia, yeah. right. right? Dave, one of our good friends that you know, that I know, I don't want to say his name. Uh, I don't know if he's watching, but he used to tell me, Palumbo told me that there's a, there's an IGF that makes your dick fucking grow like three inch. And I'm pretty well down here, so I don't need that shit. But I'm saying, I, you know who I'm talking about, right? I, I, I'm not sure, but uh, he hangs were, out I, I never, that, that never came one. out of my mouth. That never yeah, came out of my I, mouth. If I tell you, he hangs out with, he's hanging out with Fran Volpe, you know, his best friend there with a oh, German. Oh, I know. Okay, I know. I know you're talking about. Okay. And Greg, they were actually I, uh, trying wait, to wait, make wait, 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 wait. Wait, did you actually what? tell him that, Dave? No, I did not. He, he, he. <laughs> He was convinced of it himself, you know, that that was going to happen. He used to tell me, you know, Dave said there's, there's all these different IGF formulations and that there's one like IG, IGF like 2.0 or whatever. And no, the thing no can actually Walmart. make your dick like fucking 12 inches. I said, shit, mine's 11 inches, so I don't need an extra inch. Great. You got to do only fans. <laughs> Dude, trust me, I'm pretty well down there. I used to have yeah. trouble putting in the posing trunks. I don't know how these guys wear these posing trunks with because they're dehydrated and it, it, it shrivels you up. You got to tighten it. Not Armand right knows. We have excuses. We know, right, Armand? When you're dehydrated, the contest shape, your shit should be porn star. Have a long dong silver. Have a long dong silver. Dude, I got pictures of me in contest. You'll see the picture. I got this big fucking gagoots down there. I could, you know what I mean? It's like hard for me to hide that shit. Greg, I'm not like things. Johnny Holmes. You, 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 you can go to Target, Greg, and you can buy the top. <laughs> you got the top for you now. <laughs> hey, Dave, I got a question for you. And, and, and also, Larry, it's real quick about growth hormone. Why did the humatrope smell like that and no other growth hormone does? Was it something in the water or was it something Very in good. the powder? I think it was the powder because as soon as you crack as soon as you crack that thing, you smelt it. Yeah. Was it mannitol? Because there was mannitol in it. I smell it when I when I when if I use insulin too. It you smell yep. that same smell. Yes, yeah. Well, yeah. Humalog, has that well, humalog, smell to it. Humalog yeah. has it. Humalin R doesn't, but Humalog definitely has it. No, Humalin R smells like it too. It has a hospital smell. Dude, do, do, do you guys know what kind of smell? Do you have? Did any of you guys ever take injectable depot like uh, Reforbit B? Yeah, I've had yeah. it. Really dark. Oh yellow. my god. Dude, that's one. That's the thing that gave me the hole in the arm because it took. You weren't supposed to inject it, it though. I don't think, right? I did. No, that, wait a minute. Hold on. Are we talking about the bottle that had the orange stomper and it had a yellow yeah. label on it? It had a bunch of different animals on it. Yeah, dude, it yeah. looked like antifreeze. Yeah, it's called metan like metandiabol, right? Metabolol or some metan. Yeah, me metandiabol, metandiabol. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You weren't this supposed guy, to inject it though. I don't believe this guy. Because, this oh, guy drank Bud Light. Look at him. This Wait, guy no, drank Bud Light. That was, hey, hey, that was Long Dong Silver. Yeah, he you died. Long Dong Silver. I think he died. He died. 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 I remember. He died sticking it out. Yeah, it was so big. It was like fourteen oh. inches. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dude, eighteen inches. One. Reportedly, eighteen inches. It says here. Oh come on. That's what if it you, says. If you get hard, you pass out. I don't if know. You can't, Trust me, if Dave showed you that picture, if you could see the bottom, he, he used to tie it in a knot. This guy's from like the 70s and shit. Exactly. That's unbelievable. He used to tie yeah, it in a knot. Like a, it looked like a pretzel. He would tie like it in a knot. He always did that, that every <laughs> man in the world is right. taking it. What's the point? You can only get so much in. I mean, am I right or am I wrong? Like, I don't think he wanted it that big. It just wasn't. He was that big. fucking yeah. fat, though. I got a big fat. Because it hits like the cervix, and the cervix is like a little crab. Doesn't like feel like a crab. Yeah, exactly. Like, like a little crab off, man. Man. <laughs> See, Ar Armand just gave away that his dick is big. It's not small. It was just pre contest stuff. So Armand has a big dick. Let's all, you know, he hits the cervix. We all know. No, I Greg, don't care. Greg, what Greg's on another level. John's quiet, so he's got a big dick too. Mr. T can't understand the conversation. <laughs> you notice that we don't have to do shows on how to make your dick bigger because no one has a problem on the show. That's all right. Hey, you know, dude, I want to get back to the Reformed B. That shit used to even your. That was it, Reformed B. That was because because you used to actually smell. That like was a different. One. Yeah, but you weren't. That was vitamins though. You smell. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was, that was vitamin. Vitamin. Was it supposed to drink it, but we injected it just because it worked better? No, well, it wasn't. It, it came in a fucking injection bottle. 
It came in a vial. Yeah, but you're right. You're supposed to snap it and drink it. You're supposed to snap it and drink it. It was a no, red liquid. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. remember that. You weren't, weren't supposed to it drink it. It no, was like this. It had a rubber stopper and shit. Yeah. No, that's a different one. That's I the sold it. I, it was it was was steroid, I sold it and I took it. And I'm telling you something. It was looked like antifreeze when you shoot it. You know why they call it B? Because it's B vitamins. It was dark yellow. Yeah, yeah, it looked like trim. You would be fluorescent after that because oh, of the man. B vitamins. Yeah. You would burp like a fucking three hours later. You'd burp. Well, that's because you took the whole bottle, Greg. No one else burped like that. <laughs> that's the only thing that, <laughs> that made me break the out. Shit that that's the shit that gave me the fucking hole. I got an infection from that shit. It's water based, I'm, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah, it is water based. It was water based, but I loved it, bro. You get super jacked on that it, shit. It, it, it was the, the I I like injectable D ball way better than the pills. I think. Oh, it was the way pills! Better, I yeah. can't eat on the. I think about food and I gag. Oh yeah, no! Yeah, the best that, though that, was that, I re, that retro that B, what however you pronounce it. That also had, that also had an appetite stimulant in it. It did. Yes, it was for I thought it was the vitamins that were the appetite. No, stuff. it had an appetite. Yeah. I forgot the, the, which it had something else in it. Yeah, it, 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 it had. Greg was taking. Like, Greg was taking the whole bottle in one it. shot. <laughs> I was. I was. I took the he whole was bottle. probably ODing on the appetite suppress. Uh, the Dude, suppress I'm, I'm the kind of guy. If I'm going to rob a bank, I want the rules. Uh, look, I'm going to rob the bank. So if I'm going to get like, I'm going to put my ass out there for that. I'm going to. I want the rolls of pennies. I will give me the fucking pennies. There's one fell on the floor. Give me that one too. You know what I mean? Uh, Dave, you know what I want to ask you, though? What? When the trannies used to shoot the estrogen. Oh, oh here, here we go. go. Oh, 500 bucks. Yeah. 500 oh, bucks. Good. There you go. 500 Wait. bucks. Oh. Wait, Dave, I got to ask. St. Jude's, call them up, and you're going to put it on your credit card. <laughs> Wait, Wait, Dave, I, I got to ask Dave. Yeah, no, I gotta ask you. That's, when, the when would, that's the rule. That's the rule. When they would do the estrogen, <laughs> they would take B12, too, with it, in the same syringe. They used to say it helps their liver. Is that true? With what? No. B12 with what? B12, they would take the estrogen and all like psycho about that shit because I used to oh, sell yeah. it to them, estrogen too. So we'd sell, I, when I got, when I, uh, when I got robbed, some guy, it was called estradiol sipinate. And the guy thought, the guy oh, that robbed yeah. me thought it was fucking no, testosterone sipinates. He took all that shit and he didn't realize, dude, you could, you know, you can't sell that. You know what I mean? No, it, no. it makes you gain weight. But we would sell it to these fucking trannies, right? He's yeah. like real ghetto ass. Like, yo, give me some of that. You know, like they were like, they were fucked up. But anyway, <laughs> ghetto ass <laughs> trannies and shit. One was wearing a football, was prostitute in the city, was wearing a football jersey with high heels on. I was like, wow, that's pretty hot. You know, <laughs> nah. but anyway, well, but check you're, it out. So they you're, were, getting, you're getting your 500 bucks worth. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, so what about the Cali Pro? So how, how, what do you guys think? And, you know, really funny. Again? I, someone contacted me back in the 90s before I really knew Greg at all. And they said, uh, this guy up in Westchester is selling this stuff. It might have been uh, the friend you were talking about uh, earlier, Greg. Yeah, friend. maybe. He said, this, they're selling this stuff, and, and he gave me the name of it, and it was like, you know, something sipping it, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, wait a second. And I looked at it, and I'm like, that's estrogen. I'm like, yeah. you don't want to take that. Yeah, yeah we so used they, to sell it to this tranny. This, but this, there were guys who were taking that, too. They thought it was like some special <laughs> fucking They would get tits. They thought it was no. They thought it was test sipping eight combined with estrogen, and it was going to work better or something like that. I'm like, you don't want to take that. You it must be, it had to be coming me, from you. Me and my it partner were robbed. From you. We were robbed, and we had this shit stashed somewhere. Somebody. Oh, maybe they were trying to sell the stuff they stole from you. Yeah, probably. And, and they were like, "Holy fuck, bro!" Like they hit the mother load. We had a pile of sipping eight, but it was estrogen <laughs> sipping eight because we sell to these trannies from Jersey. These like. Hood rat trannies, you know what I mean? Like, yo, yo, what's up? Just got out of jail. I did a three year bid, man. I need, you know, and I'm like, holy fuck. But we, you know, we sell them the estrogen. And uh, they would always say, but I need uh, for the liver, I need uh, so my liver don't die, I need a B12. And I was like, that, I never that, that was no, nah, that was bullshit, Greg. That was bullshit. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. I told him, how do you put fucking an oil base and a fucking water base in the same syringe oh, anyway? You can do that. You can you do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you can you know, Jerry Scalise called that salad dressing. Yeah. <laughs> make, you do that to make the suspension or wind straw going better. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. All right. I, got, I met Jerry Every time. It's like a pink liquid. In fact, they, Arnold just they said that milk elevates your estrogen on that on that thing about being a vegetarian. Oh my if God. you drink milk, it builds your estrogen. Oh, oh, McDonald's. Beef, oh, beef too. They said beef yeah. does it too. Yeah, that's why he ate fucking beef all day. He had a steak in his refrigerator that one time. That kid that does this videos with him, 
and yeah. he was showing his refrigerator. He had a steak in there. So how the fuck you say you're a vegetarian? Uh, he showed himself eating watermelon. Yeah, but the Arnold Arnold lies, bro. I just did a video about that. He lies. <laughs> when he says steroids were legal when he did them, they were never legal. They were a prescription well, drug. On. Before we get off the topic, Greg, he said he took three D-ball a day. And no. He took and 100 milligram of test. Yes. What the fuck? Are Listen, you serious? I, I that would make you feel worse, I would Leon think. Brown. Leon Brown was his training partner, okay? And he told me what they used to do and how they would get this shit and stuff. And Arnold would go to this, this like, uh, clinic. And it was nurses that ran the clinic. One nurse had a heart on for him. She loved him. And he would get all kinds of shit. And he liked, he used to get Prima Bullet, which was from Europe. They didn't and take a lot of stuff, though, right? What's that? They didn't use, they didn't use high dosages back No, then. he didn't no, use no high, did. but he also went off, though. He didn't yeah. go, no, no, 100. He might have no. done, like, you know, six to eight hundred or whatever. Right. Yeah, he, I, heard, you know, I heard six hundred. I heard six to eight hundred primo. I don't know if it's true or not. I that. couldn't tell you the exact dosages. I'm, I, I, and I'm telling you the truth. To talk with, you know, Leon used to tell me all this shit, and Leon Brown was very close to him. I think he took Mastron. He took a bunch of different things, but uh, he, he was. And uh, the rumor is that he used to take a half a bottle, which is fifty fucking D ball from Seba, mm -hmm. or to a hundred. That's a rumor. Uh, uh, that never came from Leon Brown. Great right. book by Wendy Lee. She talks about that. That was when Arnold was younger and didn't know better. But I, I don't believe that. I, there, I don't. Great. There are a few bodybuilders from back then that talk about taking half a bottle at once. Seriously, I, I saw Pete, I saw Pete Grumkowski walk into Gold's one day when he was owned it. Put his gym bag down. Pick out and take a bot a fresh bottle of Anivar. Open the top. Pull the cotton out, dump the entire bottle in his mouth, yep. wash it down with a gulp of water, and then yep. start his workout. John, I yeah. see, you know this. I see a whole bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. The entire yeah. bottle, like. But Anavar's weak anyway. So. Yeah, but they were. Yeah, they were the whole bottle, Dave. No, it was only two and a half milligram, but right. still. It's the whole idea of watching somebody pick the yeah. cotton out and just right. down, that's dump the whole that's bottle down your. Where is Grubkowski now? Is he alive? Is is he yeah, still, he's, he's, he's alive. He's still, but listen, yeah. Pete, Kripkowski, money. Pete Kripkowski used to break my balls all the time and tell me I looked like a jacked, uh, what the hell's his name there? The fucking, um, oh my God, Steve uh, Siegel, Pete Siegel. He'd say, you look like a jacked Pete Siegel. I'd be like, dude, that's not that's not nice because Pete Siegel's all awesome. But anyway, Pete Kripkowski would look like, was like Lou Ferrigno. You'd see him one day and he looked like a basketball player. And then you see him the next day, he's got like 22, 23 and 12. <laughs> yeah. Grukowski had like fucking 23 inch cannons and then they'd go down to like fucking 16. It was like unbelievable. It was, it was, he would go up and down like crazy. Yeah, man. He was, really he was a monster. Too. When he was on the shit, he was a monster. Greg, yeah. Flex was like that too. If you ever saw Flex Wheeler when he was off and yeah. then when he goes on, literally in one week, he looks like he gained 20 pounds. He looked like a cartoon. Roni does unreal. that like crazy. Roni does that too, yeah. Lavroni can be can look like a just a, a waiter, and then you know, yeah. well, the next, Kevin. Kevin a Lavroni. week later, he's like two sixty five. You know, when I first one, met my Lavroni and Anavar go hand in hand, or sorry, Anadrol go hand in hand. I Guys, like they don't come off though. They think it's stupid to come off. They're like, but no well, one comes uh, off. That's the listen, Armand. That's the thing that nobody knows. Arnold used to go off. He wasn't on all year long. None Everybody of the guys did. Were. Not, we, none I, of them all did. That, that's why season. when you see the movie Pumping Iron, you see he walks in, right? And he sees 101 days to pump in, you know, yeah. to, to the Olympic. And he goes, yeah. I want to start getting some muscle. <laughs> because he was off. He, that's when he was just starting yeah. to do his cycle. Those guys right. would only do a cycle for like four yeah. months out of a year. No. They didn't look like that all year round. No. Who's Big Tony, Greg? In the in the pump and iron movie when he goes in, hey Big Tony. Remember when he oh, that's the guy behind the counter, peeling the orange. The guy yeah, behind the corner. The guy. Yeah, who is that guy? He looks like that like normal shirt. shirt. Power lifter. You know what's so funny about this, guys? So Between us, and I think Armand, even though he's younger, I think I think still, dude, we, uh, Mr. G not included. I hung around all. We all guys know 10, 20 years older than me when I was younger. What's that, bro? When I was 16, I was hanging out with 30, 40. Yeah, no, like I said, you qualify. You qualify. Yeah. You're done. But, guys, we all know the drugs. Like he said, Mastron, that was permestrol. We all know the stuff when it originally came out. Belasterone. We know that. They take Belasterone. It just means we're all. That's all. <laughs> hey, you made a video about Andriol. Yeah. I went, yeah. And looked, I went and looked in my – 
Guess what? I found it. I, so I save relics like that. I saved <laughs> the original bottle. I still had like one or two in there from God knows when, but I but I saved it. That was so funny. But Do you, you said have it was the last your own? No. I, it, it oh, I, got, I got bad news. Dave, this is Dave, the owner of Quad's Gym. He just died, too. Oh, <laughs> man. Rest in peace. Quad Gym in Chicago is a, is a stalwart. It, what a hardcore haven that was. I love that gym, man. Oh. Who's it? What's his name again? Dave. Dave. He owned. He owned the Quads Gym. He was this most guy here, owner. right? Yeah, okay. I got him up on the screen. Yeah. How old was he, Dave? I don't know. I just I, Dave Lieberman just texted me and told me he died. Dave Lieberman and I all we do is text each other people who died on. Tell Dave Lieberman. Lieberman. Dave, Dave Lieberman's Lieberman. the man. Tell him I said. One Tell Dave Lieberman. I oh, what did you Oh, what did you, you say? I he competed used, against Lieberman blood for the, for the uh, blood clot. He died of a blood clot. He got probably the, from the yeah, probably from the jab. Yeah, probably. I was about to say that, Mr. G. Look how many people have passed away in our industry from from since this started. I'm not going <laughs> to equate it to that, but since this whole thing started, so many people have died, and so many of them have died from the same similar type of thing: blood. Forty percent spike in overall deaths across the whole world. Yeah, but we see world. it because this is our industry. You know, this. I is know, our but world. it's happening. It's, you know, it's, 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 when I went to the hard. hospital, when I went to the hospital with pneumonia, like the, like last week, um, at, they were the first thing they asked me in the emergency room. First of all, one of the doctors in the emergency room leaned over and said, "Big fan of the show." So he he watched the show. So I knew I was in good hands. He's like, uh, "It wasn't even him that asked me." Another ner a nurse asked me, "Did you get vaccinated?" I said, "No." She's like, "Good, you're real. That's very smart." So they're telling you that in the hospital, even that's the hospital crazy, was bro. saying. And they had to get vaccinated. So. Hey, speak, speaking of how powerful that is, believe it or not, that's one of the things that's coming up. What? In my case, too. Oh, oh really? That's oh, insane. Yeah. He was, uh, Look, there, we, there's people that are just walking and just fall dead. Okay? So right. you, know, you got to take into consideration someone who's traveling a lot, who right. – had the right. vaccine, things did like that. Did anybody on you know? here get the vaccine? I did. I had. I got the Johnson and Johnson one shot. That was it. Lee but Priest I had no took choice. three. Lee Priest huh? took double. Didn't he take yeah, double? I, I would not do another one, Greg. If I were you, no, I would never do it. My si my sister who just died, I had to do it to see her in the hospital. They wouldn't let you in the hospital. All uh, right, right, right. Well, New York had got cards. Card. Everybody got yeah. fake cards. New York is the worst. You had yeah. yeah. They would not oh, let you. Armor, you and I are so much alike, man. <laughs> did, Jimmy, did Jimmy get vaccinated in New York, John? I think so. I think he did. <clears throat> they probably made him at the vet's hospital. All the way, they but probably told me. Got what I got. And, and all the people that they made do it mandatory. There's lawsuits now. They're so. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was, I was, I was, a friend of mine worked for uh, for the airline, and um, and good. and they made him. He he lost his job. He refused to get. Wow vaccinated and they fired him and now he's got a huge one one of many in the, in that huge am i the only one on here that got vaccinated yeah. John, did you get vaccinated oh, I didn't get vaccinated guess whose blood's going to be never got vaccinated and i never got covid why not be a transfusion i have to plead the fifth blood because like our mom i have blood. a card you got, you got vaccinated no i i think your scar tissue blocked it greg so i think you're good from all the thank you I feel, thank <laughs> god oh, right, it's, still, it's still hanging out in his arm right? it even been I, in 20 years. So Dave, I asked this <laughs> Dave, Dave, what, what leave, can you do Dave didn't leave the house for two years what's the, Dave, what's the, honestly tell everyone the truth i know tell everyone what? you didn't leave the house for two years almost i, I still you? haven't left the house i'm still home I'm well still Dave, home. Has <laughs> a hey, Dave, you got vaccinated <laughs> No, are you crazy? What about you, George? Did you get vaccinated? No, fucking you're the no only fucking one, way. Right? I'll never do anything. Yeah, you've got to the doctor in thirty years. Did you get vaccinated? I no had way. Place, though. They would not let me in the hospital to see my Listen, sister who was dying. They died. All but the scientists that that were saying the opposite, they demonetized oh, yes. Twitter oh. and all those things. Every all this information oh. that we're giving out, everyone should have been allowed to hear. And then Whoa. you make a conscious. Right, you make your own decision. Right? Right. 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 Tell me what to take, how to eat, how to sleep. Get out of here. I mean, yeah, but I had no street. choice, though. I had to see my sister. No, right. 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 You don't have to. You don't have to say that, man. I mean, and I, took the, I, I took the Johnson and Johnson, which was like supposed Whoa. to be. Listen, healthy. man. You're thank God you're healthy. You know, thank, thank God. God. Uh oh. <laughs> that's because I take 
That's a lie. All right, I got I I got to wrap up. We've been going almost two hours. Great, and by the way, great by show. By I want to send my condolences and love out to Mike Quinn's family. Yes. I know they're probably hurting right now. Yes, Mike was a good, Mike was a good guy. Phenomenal good soul. guy. I love Mike. And, uh, Oh, someone's dog agrees. Larry's Larry, got my mother tied up in the room. I think Larry's uh, dog grabbed the mailman or something like that. Uh, he's hungry. He doesn't sound very good. I, I, I don't know what he's going off about, but something's going oh. on. Larry, that sounds like a big ass dog. Nothing else. It's a big dog. I think Mr. G's cookies arrived at your front door. The dog is trying to get yeah. out. If, if anyone knows any of the information on Mike's uh, uh, funeral, I know Ed Carnes was asking me if he's going to be in Florida this week. Hey, so, come here. Uh, We'll we'll find out. We'll pass on that information uh, on the link to the show if you take a look um, about that. Once we find out where our funeral will be and where it will be. He's For now, though, a lot of people. we are out of He's time. We have dogs barking black. in the He's background. Greg's taking shots at testosterone. <laughs> and you never know what else might happen. Guys, thanks for doing hey, this. Live. We'll see you again next week. I'm going to try and break the, break the plank 